Hi everyone, Lewis here, and today I'm going to be covering another batch of screenshots which was released for the Daisy standalone game, as well as some information found in the blog post which came along with the images. This is the third batch of screenshots which have been released, and these ones not only cover the usual interiors of some buildings, but it also actually covers something briefly which we haven't seen before, which is character customization. So before I actually look into the blog post, I thought I'd show you guys the main screenshots from the dev post, as well as some other random screenshots, and also a short Q&A session. So this first one looks like a cafe area. One big thing which was really disappointing with me, at least in Armor 2, was that when I first heard about the Namask Underground Zone, I thought that would be a really cool area to explore. You know, you can have to use flashlights, you can have to use maybe the Remington with flashlight, just to see around a place, because you'd imagine it's going to be pitch dark. This screenshot emulates what I'd like Namask Underground to actually look like, but of course in the end it didn't look anything like that. The main reason for that is probably because of restrictions with Armor 2 engine, not because Namask was a bad map or anything, it's just that's how it was designed, so they couldn't really do anything about it to make it, you know, an actual dark and interesting area. It looks like the sun is pretty low in the screenshot, you can see some really nice real-time shadows which are making the area as a whole really dark. Which is something which wasn't only lacking in Namask, but just Armor 2 as a whole. Even places like Chernogorsk weren't really dark until it was pitch black, at which point you could not see anything. Since it's a confirmed feature for Daisy Standalone to have underground base building, it's something you'd expect to actually find in the game, some dark areas. So it's nice to see that Rocket and the team have put some thought into how exactly we're going to make the environments dark instead of just having the full bright appearance which Namask had, which really just made the whole underground experience a bit dull in my opinion. Judging from a screenshot, if you are going to go into a building when it's either dawn or dusk, maybe a building which doesn't have too many windows, you might actually have to use your flashlight, just so I don't miss any loot on the floor. Overall, it looks like a pretty cool screenshot, and similar to most of the screenshots which have been shown off for the DLC standalone already, you can imagine how this kind of environment will quite easily cater for some really interesting indoor gunfights. This screenshot doesn't really have anything too important in it. You can see there's some nice lighting effects. You can see a table at the bottom, which could be some place for some loot to spawn out. You can see the windows are already smashed. There's maybe the possibility of a window starting out smashed, because to be honest, I don't understand why else the windows would be smashed in a screenshot, but I mean, that could be completely wrong. Either way, the screenshot does once again show off a nice little indoor environment. And the screenshot does look like just a little residential building, so it's nice to see the ability to actually go into just some random houses compared to a mod where you'd only be able to enter things like hospitals, schools, and kind of high importance buildings. This is the same environment as the first screenshot, but at a different time of day, and you can also see that it's a different angle, of course. Again, there's nothing really too important to know about the screenshot, other than that, again, similar to a previous screenshot, it's got some tables which could have some spawnables, maybe in this kind of scene, since it is a bar, it could have some Pepsi or Coke or some kind of consumable, since then it would suit the theme. This is now a look inside a residential building, you can see again the window on the screenshot is smashed which adds to me believing that they do spawn, at least now, in smashed. This could be changed at a later date but I mean, if there's two screenshots which have both got smashed windows but no zombies or no guns or anything then I don't actually understand how they got smashed. It could just be the case that these windows are just placeholders since right now there might not be a normal window pane to add to these buildings. This could still be in a residential building which maybe has three floors or could just be the case that this is the new apartments building. Although you can see it's midday outside, inside the actual corridor it is rather dim. This is again showing off a newer lighting so the actual interiors which don't have too many windows, although they aren't going to be obviously pitch black because of, you know, light reflecting and whatnot, they are a lot darker than environments you might find in the DZ mod. So there's only a few more screenshots left and the next three screenshots show off briefly the customization for characters. It's something Rocket's talked about a lot. It's not like in the DayZ mod where you just spawn with something and then you've got the options of finding a ghillie suit, some camo clothing, and that's pretty much all you can get. But in the DayZ standalone, you're going to be able to take clothing from enemies, you're going to find clothing on the floor, and just be able to customize your character in a way you simply could not do in the DayZ mod. It seems really likely that things like your shirts are going to be separate to your pants, so it's not like you're going to have to have one suit, you'll be able to have whatever pants you want and whatever shirt combo you want or have a jacket over it and of course your choice in clothing is not only going to help with camo but also in survivability in the sense that some clothing may keep you warmer than others. This screenshot looks at a basic female model for the Daisy standalone. You can see she's got some civilian clothing on. This could be something to expect if you do choose to spawn as a female in the Daisy standalone. Since the previous screenshot is what females could possibly spawn with, this may be what males spawn with, but since there's actually going to be fist combat in the Daisy standalone, I wouldn't think so. It would be a bit weird just watching two men and boxers beat each other to death, but I mean, if that's what you guys want to do, then do it. Just take off your pants and stop beating each other to death. I'm sure you'll look really cool. 
Since he is wearing just boxers and a shirt, that confirms what I said just a second ago about having separate clothing gear for your shirt and pants, although that was pretty much confirmed already. Unless, of course, your character has to constantly have boxers on for some odd reason, but that wouldn't make any sense, so I'm pretty sure it's just the case that you can find pants and put them on when you do find them. This is a final character customization screenshot. You can see the guy has a good old coyote backpack. You can see he's got some jeans, a red hoodie. So again, just showing some variant gear which you can find in the wasteland. You can also see he's got a cap, which is something the previous two characters didn't have. And I'll talk a bit more about the separate things which characters can have in the Q&A session. So this is one of the final screenshots and it's from Kamenka looking northeast all the way up to Green Mountain. I took a screenshot in original armor 2 of exactly the same position and I thought I'd compare what exactly the two look like. So this right here is the new Daisy standalone screenshot. And this one here is the original armor 2 Shinara screenshot. Of course the previous screenshot I've shown you which is in the Daisy standalone is off a map called Shinaris Plus. The map is still of course a work in progress since it's one of the biggest changes going from the Daisy mod to Daisy standalone since we have to redo all the interiors and all that kind of stuff and I do know that they're adding some more villages and just trying to balance out the map as a whole. I can only see a few minor changes. The main differences is that the original one has a lot more fog and a lot more trees. Other than that, not really anything notable in these screenshots either. The newest dev post, which is of course the one which contains these few screenshots, was not actually to show off screenshots, so I guess these aren't really trying to show off anything new or unique, but was rather focusing on what exactly Rocket had to say to the community. So this final screenshot wasn't actually included in the dev post but was tweeted by Rocket just after he finished uploading the dev post just saying that this is something he wanted to include but forgot about. This is basically just showing off a spawning system for the Daisy standalone. You can see there's a weapon on the wall. Everything you can see in the screenshot is either a hatchet or baked beans. This is just a proof of concept showing how exactly the spawning system works and how it's different to the Daisy mod. I'm sure everyone can agree that these kind of spawns are a lot better than the ones found in the Daisy mod. Instead of just finding a massive pile on the floor then looting that, you're going to find loot on tables, you're going to find loot on walls, like maybe a dull barrel shotgun on the wall instead of a hatchet. Would look rather cool, you can imagine seeing some Pepsi cans, maybe some empty cans on a windowsill, just making the place look used. Overall, the spawning system in this prototype looks rather promising. When I said this the final screenshot, I was kind of lying, there's actually another two, I don't know where the hell they came from, but they're definitely Daisy screenshots, so here you go. Not going to talk about them, just going to let you guys see them for a few seconds. So before we go into a blog post, I thought I'd show you guys the Q&A first, which was held in Lyric's Twitch TV chat. He is a popular Daisy streamer, for those who don't know, and this Q&A session was actually with Rocket. All credit for compiling the questions and answers is to Frugal on Reddit. So the first question is basically whether or not streaming of the game is allowed and the answer to that is yes. Of course the people who are invited to the closed alpha will have to sign an NDA but streaming is something which Rocket is planning on allowing people to do. The second question was whether or not you'd have to reload axes in the Daisy standalone which is kind of a joke but kind of not at the same time and Rocket answers that by saying that axes and other items will have durability so it's not as if you have to reload them but they are going to be something which you can't use forever. The next question was how optimised is the game going to be, in other words how good is the FPS going to be compared to the Daisy mod, and the answer to that is simply, it's going to be pretty good. The next question is whether Daisy could come to Xbox or PS3, and the answer to that is that if it sold over a million units, the possibility is very high, and something tells me the game is going to sell over a million units, so Xbox and PS3 players, keep your hopes up. The next question is on modding for the Daisy standalone and the answer to that is yes but not obviously early in the development it's only going to be something accessible once the game has been out for a decent amount of time. The next question was whether or not all clothing in standalone is going to be unisex and the answer to that is yes all clothing in standalone is indeed unisex. The next question was what clothing slots are available and the answer to that is hats, glasses, torso meaning jacket and body armor. So body armor is going to be a big part in the Daisy standalone. Legs, footwear and wrists. Basically a shit ton of clothes. That's pretty much it for a small Q&A session. Now onto the blog post itself. So first few paragraphs basically just say that the original goal of December 2012 was not met unfortunately. The main reason for this was some big unexpected changes in the engine of the game. This will push the game back a few months but of course in the end it will mean a much higher quality final product of the game. The next part talks about the release cycle for the game stating that it was going to be of course a closed alpha at the start and once all the bugs are all flattened out they'll then confirm a date for the actual release of the game. 
And if anyone's wondering what exactly happened to a beta stage, essentially the release is the beta stage. It's going to be the same as Minecraft, so that's going to be something which is constantly getting updated. So it's never really a finished product, it's just constantly getting more and more things added to it. And until the developers really say this is the final product, it's always going to be in the beta stage. A TLDR for the next few paragraphs is basically there's been a lot of artwork, there's been the addition of diseases, there's been durability of items added, there's add-on components, there's batteries and basically a lot of gameplay components which weren't found in the DAISY mod. So there has been a lot of work on the game from behind the scenes. The first paragraph here talks about the UI and how it's going to be focused on ease of use for the DAISY standalone. The DAISY mod's UI was complex because of course it was based on Armour 2 which is a military simulator so you've got to have a lot of usability. But since the DAISY standalone doesn't really need so much of that functionality, they can cut down a lot of things and make the game a lot easier to pick up for a new player. Not to say the game's going to be casualised or dumbed down or anything like that, if anything it's even more complex, there's just better ways of illustrating the UI as it is right now, but in a simpler way. The final paragraph, which I think is one of the more important ones, talks a bit about the two devs which are currently imprisoned in Greece, which have been there for a long time, which were actually devs for the Shinaris Plus map. It's not known when the devs are going to return to their home country and it's definitely had a big impact on the DAISY standalone's development. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this update. As usual, there will be a link to a full article in the description below if you do want to go ahead and read through the entire thing. If you did enjoy the video or found it useful, then please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and all that good stuff. There's going to be plenty of DAISY standalone news and hype in the near future since of course the closed alpha is just around the corner. And yeah, we'll see what happens then. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, like I said, and I'll see you guys next time.